Hello Crafty family and welcome to another tutorial by She's So Crafty. For today's DIY projects, I've put together 10 of my favorite modern style DIYs that are perfect for a masculine or a feminine space. Now to get you all started, I have included the full supply list with the links in the description box below. Now to all of my amazing subscribers and visitors, I wanted to say hey hey, and if you have not yet subscribed, you definitely should, so you could be the first to see hundreds of fresh and original craft ideas on my channel. So let's dive in and get started. Now this project is a set of wood grain accent vases. Now we're going to need two of these larger frosted vases from the Dollar Tree and I found these in the glassware section. Now what we're going to do is we're going to divide this in half because these will be a two-tone vase. So I'm taking my ruler and I'm measuring up from the bottom five inches. So I'm just going to go around each one of the vases marking a mark at the five inch mark. Now once that's done, we are going to be taping these off and I love to use electrical tape for all of my round vases, it just works better. Now I did want to spray paint these so to avoid any overspray, I am going to be protecting the bottom half of the vase. So I just cut a piece of some craft paper and I'm going to start to wrap it around the vase and also use my electrical tape at the same time. So both, both sides of the electrical tape will cover the craft paper and the vase along Along the line that we previously marked. Now once you get around to the end you may need to crumple the paper up a little bit since it is a round shape. You just want to make sure that tape remains really nice and even and then wrap it around till everything is secured in place. Now for all the extras you just wrap it around and crumple it up and secure it to the vase and then you could just wrap some scotch tape around it to make sure everything stays in place. Now you want to repeat this for your other vase and here they are both wrapped and ready to go and I'm going to take it out and give it two coats of some satin black spray paint by Krylon. So here are the vases. After about an hour and a half, they are nice and dry, so you can start to remove that craft paper. Now, as you can see, as you start to remove the tape, it left a really crisp, clean line. That's what I really love about using electrical tape for my spray paint projects. Now, here are both vases, all nice and done with the top coat. So now we're gonna start working on the decorative wood grain design. So you want to go ahead and lay down one of your vases and grab your Waverly Antique Wax and this is what we'll be using to make our wood grain. Now I always like to use a chip brush or a natural brush or brush. You can get these from the Dollar Tree and I love to use those types of brushes to give really good wood grain lines in my project. So I'm just going to start um, applying the antique wax in one stroke downward motion and I, I am trimming out the top area where it meets the black. It's okay if it overlaps a little because this does wipe away pretty easily but once you get that gap filled in you just want to keep going up and down in even strokes around the vase until you get the wood grain texture that you're looking for. Now if you want little knots you could take another brush and make little swirls and um, you can actually blend those in and that really does give your wood a really Natural, natural texture on your vase. And here's what the vase will look like after I finished and now all you have to do is just um, take your baby wipe and go around the top edge of where you painted um, and added your wax to clean up any overage that got on the black paint and now you want this, this to dry while you work on your other one. And here they are, they're ready to go. So let these completely dry for a few hours. And now that they're dry, here is what they look like. I think they did turn out really, really good. And now the fun part, decorating. I think that these vases turned out so amazing. Now I think that this satin black paint with the rich texture of the antique wax looks so amazing for your project and really give these pieces a high-end look. 
I love how you can see all the amazing textures with those chip brushes and I love the smooth finish of the black satin spray paint. Now you all have to let me know what you think of this project in the comments below. Now this project is a pair of metal cage sconces. Now we're going to need another one of these natural finish signs from the Dollar Tree. And we're going to need two of these uh, geometric shaped metal cage pieces from the Dollar Tree in the decor section. And we're also going to need two four inch pieces cut from a wood garden stake that I got from Dollar General for a dollar or you can assemble a piece like this with tumbling tower blocks. Now what we're going to do is start off with our little sign piece and we need to cut it down so I'm taking my utility blade and I'm first off going to cut that decorative cutout at the top off of this piece so we have one solid plank to work with. So now what I want to do is to mark the center of the remainder of this board and I'm going to divide it down the middle. Now once I divide it down the middle I'm just going to cut it with my blade a few times and make sure those edges are nice and trimmed off even. Now if one piece is longer than the other slightly go ahead and mark that and then trim off all of the little excess. So now we have two nice even boards to work with for our project. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to mark down approximately an inch and a half from the top and then we want to make sure that dot is in the center so I'm making sure it's nice and center by putting a plus mark there making sure that I know that this right exactly in the center so our project will hang correctly. Now we will need to drill a hole through this, these pieces so I'm going to go ahead and stack both pieces together making sure that the edges are lined up and then I'm going to take my drill I think I have a 7 64 inch drill bit in my drill here and I'm going to drill through both boards at once just making sure we have that hole go through both pieces. And now we have the hole at the same spot on both boards. So now we're going to work with those little four inch wood stake pieces or if you assemble these from tumbling tower blocks we're going to work with those as well. What we're going to do is drill a hole down the center of one end of that as well. We're going to go down maybe about three quarters of an inch with our drill bit. And here are both of our pieces with the hole on the end. So now we have our two wood planks. We're going to flip them over to the back side and I'm going to go ahead and add the hangers before I start adding any embellishments. So what I'm going to do is cut a piece of jute twine with knots tied on each end and I'm going to place it between the hole and the top edge on the back of the plank. Now to secure it in place I am using a heaping amount of that wood hot glue. You just want to make sure you sit the knot of that jute twine in the center of that hot glue and place a little bit of hot glue on top of the knot. Now I'm using just my thumbnail to kind of stretch it out and make sure that that dries really taut. And then I'm going to take a couple pieces of craft paper and cover up those knots. I just think that this gives it a really finished touch. It looks so professional on the back so I love to cover those up and it also adds a little bit more reinforcement. Now this is what it looks like. Just repeat this for your other board until both of your boards have the hanging string secured in place. So now that that's done we are ready to go ahead and stain our wood pieces. So I'm going to again use my Waverly Antique Wax with a little bit of water to kind of dilute out the mixture. So with a moist towel I am just going to go ahead and grab some of that wax and I want to evenly apply it on the top of the boards. You do want to make sure you get the entire top and also those edges as well. Now we're going to repeat this for both of the boards until they are nice and stained and here they are with a nice even coat of that antique wax. Now just let these sit to completely dry. And 
and now we're going to go ahead and going to paint those wood pieces and I'm just going to use some black acrylic paint for this this piece will have a black accent so all we're going to do is paint the entire piece of these two four inch wood pieces we're going to make sure we get all the sides including the ends and there's no need to paint the end with the hole drilled in it but we do want to make sure all the other edges have a nice good coat of this black acrylic paint And here are both pieces all painted. Now sit them up and let them completely dry as well. All right, all of our pieces are now dry and we can start working on the assembly. Now what I'm also going to be using for this four inch piece are these little hooks. Now these are called little plant hooks. You can get them from any hardware store. They're fairly inexpensive. You can get them in a 10 pack for maybe a couple of bucks, but I'm going to be using that to hold up our sconce pieces. So I grabbed some of those. Now for our wood pieces, we are going to mark down one inch from the edge that does not have the hole screwed on the end. We want to make a little mark with our pencil. Now the purpose of adding the mark to both of these pieces, one inch down is to make a tiny pilot hole to put those plant hooks in. This wood for the stake is a harder wood, so we need to make a little pilot hole to prevent it from splitting when we add our hooks. All right, so now that we have that marking, I am taking my drill. Now I'm only going to be drilling in about halfway through. You should put it on a board and not hold it like I did, but definitely you wanna be careful doing this. Do it on a board and just drill in halfway through each one of these pieces. And now all we have to do is take our little plant hooks and just hand screw them into that little pilot hole. They should go in pretty easily now. And here is what it should look like. We're going to repeat that for your other one. And now we have both of our pieces with our hooks in place. So to affix our little hook assembly to our boards, I'm going to be using some number six, one inch wood screws. Now to affix it to the board, you wanna make sure the hole is aligned on each piece. Now what you should do is actually start applying the screw through the back of the board first where it just lines up, or just peeks through the edge and therefore you can align the holes a lot easier. But here I'm just kind of eyeballing it, making sure those holes lined up, but that would be the easier way to put the screw in just a little bit. Now this hot glue on here is just to temporarily hold it in place until you get everything aligned. Now once it is aligned, then you can take your screw and screw it in through the back of the board and go all the way through that wood piece on the front. Now this will make everything super secure with the screw and you don't have to worry about it breaking apart with just the use of hot glue. So now here are both of our pieces with our little hangers all affixed and ready to go. So now we're going to grab our geometric pieces. Now I chose this design because I thought it was the most unique and fun, but they do have these in circle styles, diamond styles, so many different styles you could choose from, and all of those will work for this project. Now, as you can see, these hang on those hooks perfectly, you guys. They dangle just slightly, but you can add these on for a unique look. Now to decorate these, you can leave them as is, or I'm going to add some faux succulents. You can even add some candle operative votive or tea light candles as well for a light accent. There's so many different ways that you could decorate these, but you guys, it's all up to you and what you prefer for your space. You just make it your own. Now here is the version with the little tea light. If you wanna sit the little tea light in there, that bottom um, edge will sit that tea light, the little um, metal rings will hold it in place while it's hanging. And oh my goodness, you guys. Okay, here is how amazing these turned out. Now this simple modern piece has clean lines and reminds me so much of a modern industrial style decor piece. And it's so hard to believe that these were created from Dollar Tree items, but they look so sophisticated. 
I hope you guys give this really easy project a try. Now this project is a set of modern style vases. So we're going to need two of the spray bottles from Dollar General and these are only a dollar a piece. Now one was missing the sprayer so I got it actually for 50 cents. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to go ahead and remove that sprayer that's left on there and then you definitely want to be removing all of the labels on the bottom of them because they will be painted in the end and give them a good clean. Now I am going to be painting them with this Krylon Fusion Satin Black Spray Paint and I'm going to give it a couple of coats and allow it to completely dry. So after they have dried, here are the vase pieces. I think they turned out amazing and the paint looked so great on these. So I'm going to embellish these just a little bit. I'm going to be using some jute twine and also some of these brown beads. Now I picked up these brown beads from Walmart during Christmas clearance. Walmart sells beaded garland at Christmas and when it went on clearance, I bought several of them and cut them apart just to use the beads. So we're going to start working with the jute twine because we're going to be putting the beads on the jute twine. So I'm just cutting a nice long piece of that jute twine to start and I'm going to go ahead and just first tie a knot at the very end of it. Now once that knot is tied, we're going to start with our beading and I'm going to be using the help of one of these little plastic yarn needles that I have on hand. You can get these from any craft store and I always keep it on hand in my crafts in my sewing room. So I'm going to go ahead and thread that jute twine right through that little needle and this just makes it easy to feed the beads onto the string. Now we're only going to be feeding on about six beads. That's the happy number for me. You can do more or do less if you like because I'll have three beads hanging at each end of this strand so six beads is how many I placed on here so now what I'm going to do is I am going to just make sure that end is really tight and then I'm going to start wrapping that jute twine around the neck of the vase about three times just to see how long I want it and then once you do decide how long you want it you can cut your string tie the ends and now you have beads on each end and we're going to repeat this for a second piece so you'll have one for each vase and now you can start to add them. Now when you wrap this around, you just want to wrap it around those threads and I like to tie it in a loose double knot just to make sure that they're nice and secure. And I like my beads to hang at different lengths. I just think it gives it more visual appeal. And then you're going to repeat it for the second vase. And here is what the two vase pieces will look like with their beaded accents. Now to embellish these with greenery, these are plastic so you definitely can use real plants, but I'm going to put a couple of these olive branch stems that I picked up from Dollar General for only $1 and I'm going to place one in each one of these faces and it gives it the perfect accent. I love how these look. And now I've placed these on display and they look so beautiful in my space. Now these olive branches paired with the black finish on these faces looks really great and the beaded accent just really pulls the whole look together. I love this look. Now you definitely can remove or rotate the beads around to the back if you simply want to enjoy that satin finish of the vases as well. Now this project was super easy and I hope you all give it a try. This project is a set of modern vases. Now we're going to need two of these bat sets from the Dollar Tree. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to remove all of the bats from the netting and we're going to set the balls to the side. We won't be using them in this project. 
Now the first thing I decided to do with one of them is to create a design and I want a diagonal design. So in order to help with my diagonal shape, I'm using a rubber band. By using the rubber band, it kind of sticks to the bat and stays in place. It works better than string. And then once I get it in place, I'm gonna outline it with my little acrylic marker just to know where I need to cut it at. Now I did just kind of just snatch that rubber band off and it did smudge my line a little bit, but I am going back over it to make sure that I can see where my cutting line will be. Now I'm cleaning up the little smudges with a wet cloth and just to make sure everything is nice and neat. So here's my little diagonal line and it looks perfect. I like the way that this turned out. Now to cut this, you can use a utility blade to cut it. It'll cut easily through this Dollar Tree plastic. Um, but I'm going to be using my hot knife. Now, if you guys don't have a hot knife in your crafting arsenal, definitely get one. I love using this thing. They're only about $14 or $15 on Amazon, and I'll link it in the description box below. So I'm using my hot knife to cut through the plastic. It cuts really quick and easy, and I'm just going to remove the part that I cut off, and now I have my beautiful diagonal design. So it's easy to go back through with the hot knife to trim off any of the shavings that were left behind or any of the little bits and pieces to make sure everything is nice and even. So here is my little diagonal vase uh, design all cleaned up and ready to go. And we're going to clean up that top portion too. I originally was going to discard it, but I think I can make another little simple vase out of this piece as well. Now for this other third vase, I'm just gonna cut it off right where the bottleneck starts to form. And this will create a unique and modern style vase. I know I've seen some of these on the higher end websites. I love this design as well. So now we have a group of three. Now in order for my middle vase to stand on its own, I'm gonna add one of these little bowls from the Dollar Tree. It comes in a little party section and a six pack. I'm gonna add this to the bottom of that little piece and this will create a stand for that vase. Now to adhere it, you could use E6000 or any other um, really heavy duty glue. Uh, for this project, I am just going to be using my high temperature hot glue. I'm gonna add it to the bottom of that bat piece and then stick it right on top of the bottom of the bowl that'll create the stand and now you have a nice bond between the two pieces to make it one solid piece so now that all my vase pieces are all put together what I'm going to do is start preparing them to be painted so I'm taking some 150 grit sandpaper and I'm going to just start uh, sanding the vases. You don't want to really sand hard. I really want to rough up the surface just slightly so the paint that I use will give a nice um, a nice smooth coat. Now the paint that I'm using is compatible to plastic but sanding just a little bit always helps it stick a little bit better. And you want to sand all of your vases and then once they're all nice and sanded clean them up with a cloth with alcohol i remove all of the sanding dust and it just gives you a nice clean and lint free finish when you get them all cleaned up And now that these are all clean, I'm going to take them out and give them a couple coats of this satin black spray paint by Krylon. Now after drying for about two hours, here are the vase pieces. The finish on these turned out amazing. I, they really do look very high end. I really love how they turned out. So now all you have to do is really decorate them. And here are my vases all decked out with the assorted greenery and I love how these turned out. Now I really do think that that satin paint gives these the perfect finish and they really do look like they're ceramic or even a pottery style. Now of course you can just group these together or you can stage them apart. Either way you have three beautiful designs to choose from for your space. Let me know what you think of this project in the comments below. I really hope that you all are enjoying these crafts so far, but I wanted to pop in really quick and let you all know that you could follow me on all of these platforms as she so craft DEE. -E. So now let's jump right into that next DIY. Now this project is a three-tier plant stand and display shelf. 
Now we're gonna need three of these large pet bowls from the Dollar Tree. And we're gonna need one one by two piece of wood from Lowe's that is currently $1.98. Now the first thing we're going to do is cut the wood piece into three pieces and we're going to cut them at 23 inches and you can use the saw of your choice or have the home improvement store cut these for you. So now that they're cut, we're going to go ahead and stain these. Now for a quick stain, I'm going to use the Waverly Antique Wax, but you can use any paint or stain that you like. So I'm just going to apply the wax to each one of the pieces, making sure for each side that I do apply it, I'm just going to wipe away all of that excess wax to, to help it dry faster and remove the excess wax buildup. Now we're going to do this on all sides of the piece of wood, and here is the piece all nice and stained. Now we're just gonna repeat this for our other two pieces. And once they're stained, we're gonna allow them time to dry. So while those are drying, we're gonna go ahead and grab those pet bowls and prepare those for our shelf. So we need to divide this into three equal sections. So what I did is I cut strips of printer paper and joined them together into a strip that would wrap evenly around the bowl. And then I folded that strip into three equal sections. Now this will provide me with the perfect three section division so we can mark it. So I'm gonna be marking it quickly with a white chalk pen. So what I'm gonna do is wrap my strip around and join the ends. And once the ends are joined, you could see where those folds are. And I'm just gonna mark the top ledge of the pet bowl with my little chalk marker at each one of those folds and where those pieces join. And now you see you have three equal sections. Now I'm also gonna mark the side of the bowl as well. Now to make sure all of your other bowls are marked exactly the same way, just stack them all together and then transfer that marking to the side of the other two bowls. And now everything is marked and ready to go. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna drill a hole in each side of the bowl. Now I only wanna drill it through the lip. I'm using a 3 32nd inch drill bit. And again, you just wanna carefully drill it through only the lip of the bowl, not going to the inside of the bowl. Now we're gonna repeat this, repeat this all the way around the bowl for all three of your bowls. And here they all are. They're all ready to go with that pilot hole drilled into the lip on each of the three sides of each bowl. So now our wood pieces are nice and dry and we are gonna prepare these as well with our pilot holes. So where I'm gonna mark them is from up from the bottom, my first drill hole is going to be at the five inch mark. And then the next drill hole up is going to be at 14 inches up from the bottom. And then the last drill hole at the top is gonna to be approximately a half an inch below that top ledge. Now I'm just going back with my Sharpie to mark it just to make sure I can see them better when I get ready to drill them. Okay, so now we're ready to drill our pilot holes and I'm using that same drill bit. So I'm gonna drill all the way through, going through to the other side and all of those locations that I marked. And now here are all of those holes done and I'm gonna use this piece as a template for my other pieces. So I'm just gonna grab my second piece and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stack it underneath the piece that I drilled the holes in. And to transfer that marking, all I'm gonna do is drill straight back through that same pilot hole, going through that second piece of wood, making sure the pieces are nice and even each time you drill down. And now you have an exact, exact replication of that piece and you wanna do that for the third piece as well until they're all done. So now we need to go ahead and get our screws ready for this. Now for this project, I'm gonna be using some number six, one and a quarter inch wood screws for this project. And these will make sure that it doesn't go through the inside of the bowl. 
So we're choosing the darker side to be on the outside of our shelf. So when we screw these in, we wanna screw them in just to the point where the tip of that screw pokes through just a little bit through the other side as shown here. Now we're gonna do this for all of our pilot holes on all three of our legs. And here are all the screws all mounted and ready to go with just the tips uh, poking through the other side. So now we can go ahead and grab our pet bowls and we can start assembling our shelf piece. So I'm just gonna grab one and I'm going to put it up on its side, exposing that first little pilot hole. Now what I'm gonna do is take the one that's on the bottom of our shelf and I'm lining up the very tip of that screw with the pilot hole. This helps hold it in place while you actually screw it with your drill. Now you do wanna go slowly into this. You don't wanna do it really tight. You just wanna do it until it's all the way through. And as you can see, that screw goes just through the lip only and it just barely touches the edge of the bowl but it only goes through the lip. And so now we're gonna grab our second bowl. We're also gonna line that up with one of those pilot holes, just putting the tip of that screw in there. And we are going to screw that one in place as well. Now once that's all done, we're gonna repeat that for the third one the same way. Now here are the three bowls mounted on one side of one of the legs, all nice and mounted in place. So now let's just rotate it around and we're gonna do the second one. And we're gonna do this the same way, starting with the bottom, working our way up, lining up those screw heads, um, the screw uh, tips with the holes in the pet bowls. And then we're just gonna screw all of those in the same way. Now here are two sides of our shelf piece with all of the screws secured in. And then finally, all we have to do is add that third side and this is what it looks like. It's all assembled, it's super sturdy, and these dog bowls are really thick. So now all you have to do is to set this up and decorate it. And here it is, you guys. Now you have a beautiful three-tier stand for your space. Now these large bowls are pretty heavy duty and can hold a good amount of weight too. Now I did choose to put some artificial plants inside, but since these are waterproof, you can place a real potted plant inside to enjoy in your space. Now don't just limit yourself to plants. You can use this for craft organization, bathroom item storage, and so much more. The possibilities are really endless with this little shelf design. Let me know in the comments how you would use this shelf in your space home decor. Now this project features some stylish modern vases. So we're gonna need two of these unique style vases that I found at the Dollar Tree and I am so excited to craft with these. So the first thing we're gonna do is take both of the vases, give them a nice good clean with rubbing alcohol and then take them out and give them two coats of this Krylon satin spray paint. Now after they dry, here is the finished vases. I just love how this spray paint leaves this finish. It looks so nice. Now with the first vase, we are gonna do a technique and we are going to add some beaded trim. So I cut some strips of painter's tape really thin to use on my project. Now in order to get the placement correctly, what I'm gonna do is at the top edge, I'm just taking one of these little chalk markers and I'm gonna mark it in three even sections at the top. And then I'm going to take that thin piece of painter's tape that I cut and I'm going to start wrapping it around the jar in a diagonal pattern, almost like it's swirling around the jar. Now I'm just kind of eyeballing this and now this first piece will determine how the rest of your pieces lay. So you just want to just 
um, lay it down and detach or replace it how you want to. This is the purpose of using the painter's tape. It won't damage the finish. And once you get it just how you like it, go ahead and trim off all of that excess tape at the bottom. So now that your tape has found its landing place at the bottom, we are going to take that first place uh, marking where that tape landed as the first mark to make this end three equal sections as well. And here are those three equal sections on the bottom. Now we can use this as a guide when we add our additional two pieces of thin strips of tape. So we're gonna line this up with that next little marking at the top and wrap it around in that swirl type pattern, matching it up with that bottom marking the same way we did for the first wrap around. And then repeat this for your third piece as well. Now here are all three pieces of tape on your vase and these will provide the guides when we add our accent. Now to add our accent, I am using some of these brown beads I'm repurposing from Clarence Christmas Garland. You can use any beads that you want to. Now if you want to use the loose beads, you can definitely add them one at a time of the jar, but I found that adding them on a string makes it so much straighter and neater. So this is where I'm going to take some jute twine and I'm going to string on beads to make sure it's nice and neat. Now, in retrospect, uh, to match the jar, I would actually use brown or um, the black yarn, actually, to string these on. But if you have jute twine, that's fine. I do have a fix at the end of this project. So now that we have several beads strung on that will fit the one of the swirls, we are going to align it along the painter's tape. Now I'm going to be using my wood hot glue on high temperature, which has pretty good hold, but definitely consider some E6000 or Gorilla Glue if you want a more long-term permanent hold. So I'm going to apply a bead of this glue along the side of that paint strip. You don't want to place it on top and you don't want it to touch. We're just using that tape as a guide. So I put a five or six inch strip of that wood hot glue along the vase and then I'm going to hold that beaded strand really taut and lay it in that glue applying a little pressure about five or six seconds until it starts to bond press it down in there and then when it is bonded you can add the remainder of the length of that glue and hold that bead into that glue as well the same way. So here's our first strand all in place along that strip of painter's tape and you can see we have a little bit excess of the string hanging off so we're going to cut that off leaving about an inch on that bottom edge. Now we are going to repeat this for the two additional strips around the vase. And here are all three strands of the beads on the vase using that same technique. I'm loving how this is looking. So now we could just go, in, go ahead and remove all of that painter's tape. It should peel off nice and easily since it should not have any glue on the tape. And now all of the tape is removed and now we just have those beautiful beads on our vase. Now we do have some strings at the top. Now originally I thought of removing the strings completely since the beads are glued down, but this string actually provides as some support for the beads in the long term. So I'm just adding a little hot glue inside of the vase and pressing that string down inside of that edge. I'm gonna do that at the top edge all along the outside until all three are secured inside the vase. And then I'm going to flip it over. We want to do the same thing for the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and remove that sticker first and then hot glue those strings down as well along the bottom of the vase. Now, once those are all glued down, we are going to cover that up. I'm using a round circle piece of craft foam that I had, or you can use some felt. I just cut it in a circle and I'm going to apply some more of that hot glue along the bottom edge. And once I get that done, I'm going to place it right on top of the bottom. Now this hides all of the loose strings and gives it a nice clean finish on the bottom of your vase. You just press that firmly until that glue adheres. Now on the top of the vase, we can see what this looks like. Now, if you love that natural jute finish you could keep it as is but I did want my jute 
intertwine to blend into the color of my vase. So I'm using some black acrylic paint and just dabbing it on with a fine tipped paintbrush. Again, when I mentioned earlier, you should use black yarn. You wouldn't have to do this step if you use the black yarn, but, or you could keep it natural. It's all up to you, but I'm just going to go ahead and touch it up really click, quick <laughs> with my black acrylic paint. And here is what it looks like. You guys, you just let this dry and then you can decorate it. And here you have it, you guys, a unique swirl bead and glass vase for your decor. Now I use some tall Dollar Tree fern branches inside to accent this beautiful piece. And this bead swirling looks so awesome and it really gives it a mix of modern and boho style. Now you can use half beads as well, or you could choose any color you like for this decor to your preference. And I hope that you guys let me know what you think and how you would style this in your home. Now for the other vase, what we're gonna do is give it a metallic accent. Now some of the items in this DIY will have a metallic gold accent. So this will blend into the rest of the decor. Now I'm gonna use some of this gold acrylic paint that I have by Folk Art. And I'm gonna use a couple of chip brushes that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. Now I want to have this vase have like an ombre type of look. So what I'm going to do with my chip brush is first apply a really thick and solid coat of that gold color near the bottom and you want to make this band maybe about an inch thick or so. You could do it according to your preference. And then you just want to continue to add layers going up the vase, just tapping with your different chip brushes and blending that in. And what it will do eventually is as you grow up higher into the vase, it'll give it a really beautiful texture and ombre pattern. Now, once you reach near the top where you really want it to fade into that ombre, you just want to lightly dab and then go back near the bottom and add more paint. So you can see I'm lightly tapping around the top to give it that final ombre look. And look, you guys, this just looks so amazing, so effortless. You let this dry and all you have to do is decorate with it. And that is all you have to do to complete this version of the vase. Now I have seen vases with a similar style on like restorative hardware for an insane price, but I love that I was able to make one on the cheap for only a few bucks. Now I really do hope that you guys love this version of the vase as much as I do. Now this project is a set of modern glass vases. Now I'm going to use two of these ombre glass vases and these were from the Dollar Tree. Now what we're going to do is clean these up really good with rubbing alcohol and if you want to go ahead and remove any labeling from the bottom and clean those up as well. Now once they are all nice and clean I'm going to take them out and give them a couple of coats of satin black spray paint by Krylon. So while those are out there drying, I am going to cut two pieces of this faux leather ribbon. Now I did cut this from a piece left over of this faux leather fabric that I had on hand, but the Dollar Tree does sell faux leather ribbon. So if you happen to find it, you can use it as well. Now this is a half an inch wide cut. Now I'm also going to be using some tacks and I'm going to be using the heads of the tacks. So I just put some in a little piece of foam wrapped with paper and I put about 20 in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually paint these with some black acrylic paint. Now I'm just going to start off just dabbing it on the tops of the tacks, just making sure I get really good coverage. Now you want that to sit to completely dry and then we're going to go in with a second coat, just making sure that all of that gold color is nice and covered. Now once that dries, we got to seal everything in. So I'm going to be using some of my matte Mod Podge. Now they do have smaller sizes in the Dollar Tree that you can buy. You don't have to use like the mega size that I have here. So all I'm going to do is take some of that Mod Podge and then I'm just going to brush it on the top of each one of those tack heads, just making sure you seal all of that paint color in. And you want to allow this to dry till it gets to a nice matte sheen as shown here. 
Now here are the vases after they've dried for about an hour and they look amazing. I just love how this paint looks on these little vases. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the ribbon strips and I'm going to grab um, the nail, uh, tack nail head. So what I'm gonna do first of all is take the ribbon strips and I wanna cut them down to size, just making sure the ends overlap, maybe about a quarter of an inch for each one of those jars. And then to prepare the tacks, you wanna have a pair of wire clippers. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab one of the tacks and I'm just gonna cut off the little pin side of it. You could do this inside of a zippy bag or something like that just to make sure the pieces don't fly all over the place. But you just wanna cut off all of the heads of all of those tacks. So now we can go ahead and start applying that ribbon around the vases. So I'm just gonna apply it around and then the portion that the ribbon overlaps itself, you're just gonna add a dot of hot glue. You don't really wanna add hot glue to the actual vase itself, so that way your ribbon can be removable in case you wanna change up your look. So now we can start adding our tack head. So I'm just gonna start adding one, and you notice this vase has these little lines in it, so I'm just gonna actually follow that pattern, and for every other line, I'm going to place a one of those tack heads right over there, and just apply it with a dot of hot glue. And here is one with all of those tack heads in place. I love how this looks. And now you just complete this for your second vase. And here are both of my vases all decked out with their faux leather trim and a nail head design. And now all you have to do is to fill these with whatever kind of decor you like. And here you have it, you guys. I just added my greenery and placed them on display. Now what I put in here was some boxwood, but these would definitely look great with some pompous grass or other neutral colors as well. Now I think this finish is absolutely beautiful on these and I really hope that you give this DIY a try. It is really easy, but turns out so high-end looking. Now this project is a modern style shelf piece. We're gonna need two of these slingshot toys from the Dollar Tree. And we're going to need one of these wood grain signs from the Dollar Tree. We're going to start with the slingshot toys. First, we're going to remove those from the package and then cut off the little slingshot portion of the uh, toy piece. So you can see here, all we're left with is the frame, the little Y shape, and we'll be using this part in our project today. So we're gonna go ahead and sand all of that down really lightly and then clean it up because we will be painting these black. And I'll be using my black satin by Krylon. So while those are out there to dry, we are gonna to start to form the shape with our board. Now for our board, I wanted it to be about 18 inches long. So I measured at 18 inches and then I took my metal ruler there, made a mark, and then I'll be cutting this off with my utility blade. Now we're gonna put our rabbit piece to the side and now we have an 18 inch board. Now as you can see, it's not as, as straight and not as firm as we would like it. So we are going to be reinforcing this and I'm using a leftover five gallon paint stir stick that I have from a previous project. This should give it plenty of firmness that you need to actually display your items on in your project. Now you can attach this with your wood hot glue or wood glue and you're just gonna run a bead down the center of that five gallon paint stir stick and this one's cut at about 17 and a half inches and then we're going to press it down the center of the underneath of the board and as you can see it's a lot more firm and rigid now and we're going to be able to use it in our project. So now what we're going to do is we're going to measure in two inches from each side because this is where we'll be putting the legs for our shelf piece. Now initially I thought about gluing these on but I just wasn't really confident that it would last and you know I love to provide you guys with quality projects so I will be adding screws to this project. So I want to go ahead and screw a hole, a pilot hole, into those two inch marks that I made on the board so it goes right through that supportive stick on the back. 
And I also am using a couple cuts left over of the Dollar Tree plunger handle. Now these are cut at three and a half inches, but you'll see later in the project, I'll actually have to cut them down to two inches. So cut them at two inches for now for this project. Now what I'm going to do with these pieces is I am going to add my uh, wood hot glue and I am going to glue one of those pieces over each one of the pilot holes on the bottom of our shelf piece. Now this will help keep our legs in place and provide a little bit um, of support and stability. So we're going to, once those are adhered, flip it over and we're going to run our drill right back through. So it goes down into those Dollar Tree plunger pieces. And I'm using a 7 64th inch drill bit. Now I am going to be adding screws through the top and I'm using a one and a quarter inch wood screw. Now I'm just going to screw these down into that um, Dollar Tree plunger handle piece that's under the bottom. Now these should be screwed in. They're going to be nice and flush and so they will blend into the final finish and they won't get in the way of anything that you place on your shelf. So now that um, this much of the project is already assembled, we can go ahead and stain all of this because these are all the wood pieces that we'll be using in this project. So again, I'm going to be using my Waverly Antique Wax and I'm going to be applying it all over the piece starting at the bottom, making sure you apply, then wipe away with your paper towel and do the same thing for the top of the shelf. So as you can see here, the color blends in really well, really beautiful color on this wood. So it looks great. You don't really need to stain the little pegs because they will be covered up with your slingshot pieces. So I've set the piece out to dry a little bit and it's ready to go. And I've also gone out and grabbed my slingshot pieces for the legs. Now these slingshot pieces will actually be sliding over those little pegs for that we have on the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to take our hot knife and we are going to be cutting a hole in that bottom handle portion. Now my expectation was that this handle was going to be hollow on the inside, but there is some supportive brackets inside there. That's where this, um, tool comes in handy because it cuts right through all of that plastic therefore and you'll be able to actually um, clear the path so you can insert it over your little peg at the bottom of your shelf. Now initially I cut mine at three and a half inches but it was too long so as you can see it doesn't go down flush against the shelf there's about a there's a little gap there so when I took my ruler I measured it's about a one inch gap so that's why I ended up and suggested that you cut it two inches <laughs> cut it two inches instead because I think that that will work perfect for this project. So I'm just going to mark and cut off the excess I don't need. I'm just using my jigsaw really quick to cut that off. It doesn't have to be perfect since it's going to be inside those little legs. So I went ahead and cut a hole in both of my slingshot pieces at the bottom. And now I can slide them right over that peg. Now to adhere these, I am squeezing probably eight to 10 pumps of hot glue inside the leg and then pressing it on to the peg. What happens is when that you put that glue in there, it'll run down onto the board and onto the connection and secure it all in place. And you want to do that for both legs. Now, once both legs are nice and adhered, you want to touch it up with a little bit of paint. Now I'm using some black acrylic paint here. Now this acrylic paint does dry in a matte finish. So you do want to make sure that when it does dry, that you touch it up with some satin finish. And I'm using some satin Mod Podge over there just so the color blends in really well. And here is the shelf all put together. The Mod Podge has dried and now your shelf is ready to decorate. Now as an option, if you have an additional bunny shelf, you can stain that and add that to the bottom as well. And I was just showing here as an example how it would look if you were to do that. Totally optional, but it would definitely work. But now you could go ahead and decorate your single shelf. And there you have it, you guys, a beautiful modern shelf for your space. Now the wood sign from the Dollar Tree is perfect one, reinforced, and it takes the stain so very well. Now I love the design of the legs too. Such a cool way to use those slingshot toys. Now this project is a glass vase with wood accents. 
We're going to need two of these iridescent vases from the Dollar Tree and these craft sticks from the Dollar Tree. Now what we're going to do is start off with those vases. Now I'm not a huge fan of iridescent so I'm going to give them a couple coats of black satin spray paint. Now once they're dry, here's what they look like and I absolutely love the change in the color. Now to accent it, I'm going to use some of those leftover craft sticks that I had stained with my Waverly Antique Wax and I just cut them down to size so they'll fit around the neck of each one of the vases. Now I'm going to be applying this with just my wood hot glue or you can use the 6000 or any kind of other adhesive that you prefer. So I'm going to add hot glue to the back of each one of my wood pieces and start applying it around the neck of the vase right under that top lip. Now once that first one is bonded, you just want to continue to add them around there, just making sure they stay nice and even since I cut all my pieces to the same size, as long as you adhere them in the same way, they should line up really easy and is just apply them end to end. Now here is the wood applied around one of the necks of the vases and I really love this look. So I'm gonna go ahead and complete it for the second one. And here it is, super simple. This is how it's done. And I love the finished look and now I can decorate them. Now you just have to decorate and you have an amazing modern set of vase decor. Now I do really love how the light hits the diamond pattern and it looks so awesome. Now you guys, all of these DIYs were so fun to create today and I hope that I have inspired you to recreate these. Now as always, it's hard for me to choose a favorite, but let me know in the comments which one of these projects was your favorite today. Listen, I hope that you guys enjoyed seeing these creations again or for some of you for the very first time. If you love DIYs on a budget, please give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Make sure that you're following She's So Craft DEE on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest for the latest news, sneak peeks, and giveaways. Now also be sure to subscribe by clicking my She's So Crafty logo on your screen and hit that bell to be notified when the next DIY goes live. It doesn't cost a thing. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all next time.